In this video, we're gonna go over a specific Amazon sourcing strategy that is geared towards finding products that most Amazon sales are passing up on every single day. If we are just meeting, my name is Garrett. I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller, showing you how you can make a living off of Amazon as well. So without further ado, stick around for the video and let's hop into my screen. So let's get right into it, guys. Obviously, we're here in Keeper Product Finder, probably my favorite sourcing tool um, to use on Amazon. And the products we're really looking for specifically today are products without a sales rank. And I know a lot of you guys, when you hear products without a sales rank, you're so accustomed to skipping over them. And, and rightfully so, because a lot of them don't sell, right? They don't have any sales data. They don't sell. We would never want to take part in selling them. However, the category of products without a sales rank on Amazon have a second tier, have a second subcategory, and that is products that don't have a sales rank, but that sell really, really well. And there's just a glitch in the backend data on Amazon, um, which results obviously in the no sales rank. Those sorts of products, there's tons of opportunity in simply because again, so many sellers are just accustomed to glossing over them, skipping over them. And the softwares they use also skip over them, namely tactical arbitrage. It's gonna skip over really any sort of product without a sales rank. However, if we can pinpoint specific products that don't have a sales rank, while also being able to validate that they do sell at speed with velocity and we want to sell them, those opportunities, those products um, yield tons of opportunity and, and profit as well for us. Right. So those are the products, those are the opportunities that we're going to be looking for today with Keeper Product Finder. And we could see at this top row here, we're going to get it started with obviously using Keeper Product Finder's no sales rank tool to specifically pinpoint those specific products. You can see um, when we hit that filter, when we activate that filter, we're down to 570 million products. We're also going to set just a minimum buy box criteria of, of just $20, right? We want to be buying products that have an active buy box. Um, so we're just going to set a minimum buy box of 20. We're also going to restrict and filter out Amazon or products that Amazon is taking part in the product market with. We don't want to start competing with Amazon. Um, so we're going to filter those out as well. You can see one after those three filters, we're down to about 61 million products. We're also going to set a brand filter. So in this video, we're just going to specifically look for Nike products. We're going to set a quick little Nike brand filter. And after that, that does some damage, right? We're down to 47,000 products. But we want to keep narrowing this down to a manageable subset of about, you know, a couple hundred products that we can then go through that are very warm, accurate, high conversion products. And the way we do that in this scenario is with the reviews, right? We can all agree that if a product on Amazon is generating consumer reviews, that means that product has to be selling. And we've already established that the products we're looking for do not have a sales rank. So if we couple those two points, if we couple the products that don't have a sales rank that are also generating reviews, customer reviews, that is the validation we need and that we're looking for to prove that the products are still selling and that we want to uh, buy them, right? So we're just gonna start to toggle with the review count, right? So what happens if we put in a thousand reviews? We're gonna keep upping the review count parameter in this specific filtering example um, to yield a product subset of about two or 300. Ideal, the lower the better because that means those products are, are better for us. So a thousand doesn't get us there. So let's try 4,000. Right down to 327. Let's try and get that number under 100. Let's do 6,000. Um, still no. Let's try 10,000. So 67 products. 67 products, just to kind of um, reiterate all the filters we've used, go over all the filters we used. We started with the most important one, which is obviously the no sales rank filter, bringing back all products in Amazon without a sales rank. From there, we established a buy box parameter of, of $20 minimum, right? We're only wanting to really look for products with the active buy box. Filtered out Amazon um, being in stock on our products. We obviously, again, we did our Nike brand parameter. And then finally, we did our reviews, right? We hit that at 10,000. And that brings back 67 products that meet all of those criteria. So if we hit this find products button, we're going to see the results. And as you would imagine, when we start to kind of click through a lot of these products, 
we're not expecting to see that sales rank line, which is okay. We would expect that, but we want to be, we want to still hit all of our other touch points, obviously a consistent buy box, consistent offers. Also, it's worth pointing out when we're looking with this criteria, with this lens, the offer count is typically going to be a lot less, right? It's, we're going to be dealing with a lot less competition because we're looking in such a nuanced space, right? And so with this particular product, obviously the buy box is super consistent. It's about 16, 17. If we can buy these for about eight, that would make a lot of sense for us. Um, considering the fact that if we look at the reviews, right, the reviews are consistently and steadily going up and they have been um, throughout the entire lifespan of the product. Obviously Amazon got rid of a variation here. So that is the explanation for that little downspell. Um, so if we use our trusty seller app, right, we can see if we can find this particular product. It looks like in this case, we can find them for about 11, considering Kohl's cash brings at 20%. Um, that brings back, I think, what, 850 or so. It's not gonna break the bank, but I mean, a solid 11, 12% margin, um, just from the first product that we looked at. If we go back to keep a product finder, and we start to look through some of these other products. Um, this one looks really interesting. You can see that blue line on the bottom right. Um, obviously the buy box is steadily increasing. $100 for revolutions is a good deal, a good selling price. Very low competition, four to five sellers. And the buy box is consistent probably between 80, 90, or about 90 and 110. So if we can buy these for anything less than call it 65-ish, $60, we would be in business. Looks like we have a couple different options. Kohl's may have them. Um, see if they have the 11 wide that we're looking for. Um, 11 wide, yep, looks like they can ship. Uh, we can add them to cart. So $60 minus the 20%, that brings it down to 48. Um, and that brings us back to like a 22, 23% margin just from this specific product. Right. And so a couple of things to take away from this specific sourcing video. First and foremost, again, when we start to look and do our product research with a nuanced lens, we're adding complexity to the way we source products. We start to find products that not many people are finding. And that's the key point. Doing things that other people won't yield results other people don't get. Right. And so by looking in these sorts of spaces for these added layer of complexity oriented products, we're just naturally going to get a lot better results. Um, and we can continue to go through, obviously we found 60, 70, 80 products, whatever that number was that are, you know, going to be naturally high conversion products. The only piece left, right? When we're looking at all these products is just simply to validate the product still sells. And that's mainly going to be done through that increasing review count. That's going to be it for this video, guys. I appreciate you watching. If you found value, share it to a friend, like, comment. A subscription would be um, greatly appreciated, guys. We will see you in the next video. Catch you.